White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre was grilled in yesterday's press briefing on Centers for Disease Control and Prevention guidance recommending kids mask up in indoor settings regardless of vaccine status. Let's watch. Especially with the president going to Congress to ask for more money for a new vaccine and more money for the CDC, should we keep funding these studies if the CDC is not making guidance that follows the results of those studies? Here's what I'll say. Uh, we did something that the last administration was incapable of doing, which is putting to forth a strategy to really truly deal with COVID-19 and this pandemic. They were incapable of doing that. We put forth a comprehensive plan and we are now in a different place than we were two years ago, a year ago. We are in a much better place to fight COVID-19. And we have the tools and that includes masking, that includes uh, vaccinations. And as you know, uh, CDC and FDA said they're going to have vaccine by mid-September, and we're going to make sure and con con continue to do what we have done the past couple of years is inform folks, let them know that these new vaccines are here, that they have to make sure to take the inf their flu vaccine and also the RSV. The reporter cited a piece published last year in The Atlantic revealing that after examining several studies on mask mandates to evaluate the efficacy of CDC's no end in sight mask guidance, the writers came up, quote, empty handed. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden joked yesterday about masking. Let's watch. Lord, buddy, we explained to the press, I've been tested again today. I'm clear across the board, but they keep telling me because this has to be 10 days or something. I got to keep wearing it, but don't tell them I didn't have it on when I walked in. I mean, that, yes, that's the indifference to uh, government health guidance that I like to see. That makes me more enthusiastic about Joe Biden saying, they tell me I should wear this for another five or 10 days. To hell with it. I'm putting it away. That's my president. Um, I want to go back, though, to what Karine Jean-Pierre said. What did Trump, what did the Trump administration do differently or so wrong or bad on COVID with respect to vaccines, the, the, the vaccine, the Operation Warp Speed happened while he was president. I do the vaccines, think, I mean, Joe Biden got yeah. a little bit lucky that they came out as soon as he became president, they were finally ready. And he, I, I guess she's kind of taking credit for that there. That doesn't seem fair. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know how much there was any there there, but there was definitely a public perception that Donald Trump couldn't be trusted with vaccines. And I do think that it's a large part of why Biden ultimately is able to win yeah. in 2020. Um, that one doesn't seem fair. Look, I, I, I think the, the question that's being put to her is a good one for different reasons that I'm sure you do. The Biden administration has made a big show of saying that the pandemic is over. They have not only ended or had their hands forced on ending any kind of uh, vaccine mandates, mask mandates on a local level, have diminished to such an extent that when one or two schools pop up around the country, we do a big segment about it, but it's as, it's as common as litter boxes in uh, high schools. <laughs> high school well, bathrooms. no, it's, that's not true. No, that, I, no, that, those, those don't literally exist don't exist. exist. Right. I, I'm but just, some schools I'm just are masking. And yeah, it's, uh, some schools are masking. You know, it's very, 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 very rare. And that's by design. I think the Biden administration knows that there are those who might be his political opponents that would get a lot of juice out of being able to talk about um, authoritarianism during COVID. We talked about this in an earlier segment. Part of the wind going out of Ron DeSantis' sails feels attributable to the fact that no one really cares as much anymore, that he made the quote unquote right decisions on COVID to a, lot, a, a big percentage of the population. That all seems like in the real, real mirror. So from a political perspective, Biden might have made a good bet in saying I ended COVID. The question remains as we are in the middle of another resurgence uh, and as we contend with, we don't talk about it here, but there's a lot of conversations happening elsewhere about new research about the um, cause, causality behind long COVID and what the longer term health costs are gonna be on society from people suffering from um, uh, these kind of prolonged illnesses, if that's gonna be a, a good and safe bet. He's also an extremely old president that people have concerns about because of his age. His wife currently has COVID. Um, the glib flailing around of I'm not gonna wear this mask, I mean, it might play well, again, with a certain part of the population, but he has to contend with the inconsistency between the guidelines that are promulgated by his own agencies and what he is choosing to do. Now, many guidelines, as we discussed last week, 
are simply that guidelines and nobody takes them very seriously. Only drink what, you know, right. however many drinks of alcohol or how many drinks of coffee and exercise this many numbers of hours, minutes right. a day. Most people don't do that. And we recognize that we're just kind of taking our lives in our hands and it's just advisory, but it, there, it is out of step with the emphatic insistence that there was all of this moral uh, morality in terms of uh, complying with COVID guidelines just two years ago. And I do think that there's something unsettling about not only saying COVID is over, but ending all of the support systems that existed for people who did want to choose independently to protect themselves from a virus and from the consequences of long COVID by not circulating the free tests anymore and never having really provided any kind of um, free masks to the general public. Look, I think everyone should make whatever choice that they want to protect themselves. You know, you can always you can choose to do more if you want to do that. If you want to um, wear a mask in any context, I think you should be able to do that. I don't think it should be stigmatized um, as long as it's not being forced on other people. And I, you know, you, you said a minute ago that, but it's very. We're still at, we are still at the stage where the mandates on masks and, and vaccines are rare and are mostly concentrated at the school level. Um, and I, I hope it remains that way, but I gotta say, I'm a little worried. Um, I, I'm, I'm worried that, um, and, and, and now I, I think if Biden has good political sense and control of his party, you're right that he would shut that stuff down because it's not politically popular to continue requiring these things. You can make available and without requiring. But I worry that, you know, rogue agents or just agencies that kind of operate on their own, you know, what if, if, if are they going to get brought back on, on uh, planes? That would be the big, uh, that could be a big tipping point. I think that would be a disaster for, for the Biden administration's reelection pro, uh, uh, prospects. And I think maybe he does realize that, but we'll have to see. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to mask up on a plane. I would advise it for at least the runway portion when there's no air circulating and no ventilation whatsoever. Um, and that does put any flight attendants in a little bit of a tricky situation because, you know, presumably I think they are not supposed to mask, which means they don't really have any control. It's kind of like um, part of the rationale behind st uh, banning cigarette smoking was that employees of restaurants and bars didn't have any choice right. in the matter as to I mean, whether or not they wanted to to post that banning that as well you but know, all, I, all these years no. later I, I do think the public consensus is that it's a better a better world um so you know people can do what they're going to do but I, it is very frustrating to me that there's absolutely no push to have the government do anything about giving people health care to provide for long covid or providing testing that will enable people to make decisions about when they should and should not be masking. Well, what do you mean no support? I mean, they gave, I mean, for schools got, right, $300 billion to do whatever they want with. And, they, and that hasn't been put into effect. And there's absolutely no push to make sure that people implement air purifiers, which have been demonstrated to have much more significant effect yeah. at diminishing the spread of COVID than masking. Everyone's hollering at the government to not do stuff. And I'm, you, you guys are getting a little confused about the government and its role. They're happy not to do stuff. They're happy to leave you to your own devices to suffer and flail in the way that you're going to suffer and flail. And I'm afraid you're all going to look up and realize, oh, crap, I'm the one that is bearing all of the brunt of the consequences of this pandemic. And I, you, you can be arguing for your freedom at the same time that you're arguing not to be left to be sick and to die in a country that has no universal health care system, where both Joe Biden and Jill Biden, if they get COVID, they can get support, they can get time off of work. They're not going to have um, to deal with uh, uh, long-term illness, illnesses on their own. They've got good government insurance. I just hope that people keep keep their their eyes clear and, and don't, don't, I guess, be careful what they wish for. Because they're not getting the help. I think that Biden's purely backed, fully backed off of COVID. I don't think you're going to see anything coming from the Biden administration with respect to any kind of mandates. And you're also not going to see anything from the Biden administration with respect to policy that will help you live your lives through what could be an ongoing health crisis. I mean, look, I would certainly rather, if, if, if the government's going to do something, I would certainly rather it do something that's voluntary and supportive rather than controlled and forced on Me people. Me too. I've said that throughout. Was, I'm not I mean, a mandate person, but yeah. I think there, there needed to be a lot more in the way of carrots. But no one wanted to hear it. If I, if I say the government should keep sending tests, if I say the government should um, 
uh, send vegetables to your house uh, so that you can stay home through a quote unquote lockdown. If I say the government should keep paying you um, uh, checks that enable you to stay home from your job to prevent a spread in a pandemic, there are a lot of people who are both against those policies that would make it easier to voluntarily social distance and stay at home at the same time that they were against people who were forced to go into, into public having protection from the virus they were exposed to. When we were speaking to the expert, the gentleman from Sweden, about their own policies, part of the message that he had to share was that, one, there was more social cohesion and a desire to voluntarily do those kinds of things, but also that people had the social support to do it, that they were more likely to have housing, independent housing, and live alone and to be able to social distance from their families because they don't have the same housing crisis that we're dealing with here, where people are ended up having to pack, pack together and be exposed exposed to each other, that they had jobs that were more likely to make allow them to work from home. Here we, in Business Insider, every other day we see some article saying CEO says it's toxic, unhealthy, and bad to work from home. Get back to, into the office place so we're not wasting money in all of these empty buildings that we signed 10-year leases on. <laughs> I mean, there's obviously like a conflict of interest there. And I, 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 I am personally very wary of any government mandate. At the same time, that shouldn't be a license to be indifferent to what it takes to stop the spread of a pandemic. Those things don't have to be in tension with each other. And I've been frustrated about this discourse the entire time, because it does feel like if you're anti-mandate, you have to be blasé about the very real realities of what this pandemic could bring long term in this country and the world. Mm. All right, we'll continue to follow the potential return of mandates, and we will have more rising right after this.